These are algal balls, more precisely they're alginate beads containing green photosynthetic algae. They're simple and fun to make, but more importantly, they're a really useful tool for investigating photosynthesis as it's happening. The algae in the balls photosynthesize, and that can be detected by observing color change in a hydrogen carbonate indicator solution. This allows your students to plan and carry out a whole range of experiments and investigations. The simplest thing you can do is show them that photosynthesis requires the presence of light. You take two vials and count out equal numbers of algal balls into each to make it a fair test. You then pour indicator solution into each vial. And you cover one of them with some black paper. Leave them under a bright lamp for about 30 minutes and what you should see is a change in the indicator solution that shows that the ones exposed to light were photosynthesizing while the ones in the dark were not. Now you can provide the algal balls ready-made to your students, but I think it's a good idea to let them make their own. And not just because it's fun, but because it shows students that scientists often have to do preliminary work before they carry out an investigation. The algal balls themselves are fairly straightforward to make, but you will have to prepare the alginate and the algae in advance. You'll need to buy a starter culture of algae from a supplier and bulk it up so you've got enough for a class. you need some algal enrichment medium and add that to some water. Add the algae. Give it a good swirl. and leave it with a bright light on and pump some air through it. And leave it like that for about three weeks. After that time, you should be left with a dark green culture like this one. Turn off the air pump and let it settle for an hour or so. What you're hoping to end up with is something that looks like this. You'll need to pour this clear liquid off from the top because it's that dark green algae settled at the bottom that we want to use for the algal balls. Now the alginate needs to be made the day before. To make that you take some sodium alginate and you add it to some distilled water on a stirrer and you need to leave that probably overnight because it does take some time to dissolve. You can get precise instructions and quantities for all these things from the SAPS website. To make the algal balls, students mix equal quantities of the algae and the alginate then drip the mixture through a syringe into a solution of calcium chloride. The balls are then washed with tap water and given a final rinse with distilled water. One of the quantitative investigations students can carry out is to explore how the rate of photosynthesis is affected by light intensity. They place vials of algal balls in indicator solution at different distances from a light source. A compact fluorescent light source has less of a heating effect than a filament lamp. The algal balls will absorb carbon dioxide from the indicator when they're photosynthesizing. So the, the, in theory, the ones closest to the light should photosynthesize faster. And the ones that are photosynthesized at the greatest rate will be more purple, and then we can look on the scale and see which pH this shows. After a certain amount of time, we can see which ones photosynthesize at the fastest rate. The vial closest to the lamp shows photosynthesis has happened at a greater rate because the indicator has changed to a darker purple. The indicator solution allows students to compare rates of photosynthesis in different conditions by judging the colour of their samples. You can provide them with a chart like this where they can match the colour and convert that to a pH. However, it's much more accurate if you prepare your own set of buffered indicator solutions.
These students are investigating the effect the wavelength of light has on photosynthesis. For this practical, coloured filters are placed over the vials to control the wavelengths to which the algal balls are exposed. Plants don't use up all wavelengths of light, so um, by putting on these different filters, this one only allows red light through, uh, this one only allows green light, and this one only allows blue light through it. We put them an equal distance away from the lamp, and um, after a certain amount of time, we remove the filters. And the more alkaline the vowel is, or the colour change, the greater the rate of photosynthesis. These students are using neutral density filters and a colorimeter to estimate the compensation point, that is the point at which respiration and photosynthesis are in balance. We're looking at um, the effect of different light intensities on the rate of photosynthesis. Um, so what we do at the moment is making up the different the filters which uh, let through different, different intensities of light. So you've got the dark filter don't, doesn't let in as much light. We're expecting to see uh, darker filters. Not, you won't see much of a colour change um, in the light ones, you will. Um, so we'll, we'll measure the absorbance of those, those colours in the colorimeter and then we'll be able to plot this on a graph. From our graph we can work out the compensation point because we found out that the amount of CO2 that's being produced is being reused back in the process of photosynthesis. I'm going to put them the same distance from the light source, um, so, and it's the filters that decide how much light is going through. For things that are so straightforward to make, algal balls allow for a wide range of both simple and sophisticated investigations. They're a really engaging way for students to explore photosynthesis through practical work.